a big saying in my family that uh, it's kind of has always stuck with me is it's all about the adventure. And that's just kind of how I've, I've lived my life to this point. It's just if there's a bump in the road or if whatever decisions I try to make, I just try to kind of roll with it and, and figure it out as you go. And there's going to be highs and lows along the way, but as long as you kind of stick with it and, and try your best at everything, it, you know, I find it's always worked out for me. There's a shot and a goal for Michigan State. Sasana, they tie it. Sasana, the shot. This is a shot, they score. And Sasana has tied the game for Michigan State. I guess my whole family is pretty much from um, Rhode Island and specifically North Providence. My two parents grew up, went to the same elementary school together. My grandparents actually live next door to us. We go over there every Sunday. And my grandma makes uh, homemade sauce, meatballs. Um, they're old school Italians. My grandfather's Dennis Sr., my dad's Dennis Jr., and I'm Dennis the Third. So it's kind of funny, you don't really meet a lot of a lot of thirds these days, but um, I was uh, one of the only kids in my town that, that played hockey, and that's just kind of uh, what I grew up with. We grew up in the rink. I mean, I coached my son next door until he went to uh, high school. He was a good defenseman. Little Dennis the third took right after him. He kind of skates in the same manner. I can pick him out on the ice like, oh, that's Dennis. You know, he's got the movements of his father, you know, smooth skating and, um, you know, the hockey sense. From the time I was two when I put on skates till the time I was probably 13, 14 years old, 15 maybe, um, my grandfather and my dad were, were my coaches for, for all that time as well. So my grandfather always ran the D door, which is where I was, and then my dad was always the head coach. So when I was younger, I, I didn't really realize how cool it was. and. Um, now that I'm kind of older and, and get to look back, it's pretty cool to kind of share all those years with those two guys. And it's kind of funny how that ended up working out. We grew up together mm. until he went to high school, you know. A month or two into seventh grade, my parents just thought I should probably go the hockey route. And they put me in a, a school called Hillside School, which is 45 minutes away from my house in Marlboro, Massachusetts. And a bunch of my friends from growing up playing AAA hockey um, actually all went there at the same time because they wanted to kind of make it into a prep school, if, if that makes sense. And I started to live there five days a week. Oh, yeah. Being away from home, he started learning on his own. I think it was an adjustment. He's one of those that doesn't take long for him to get in the, the groove of things. And then after that, I went to Kimball Union Academy in Meriden, New Hampshire, um, which is a prep school and, and for hockey, obviously. And that was a great uh, three years. I made lifelong friends, people I still talk to. Yeah, we'd get in the car and drive out to New Hampshire. We'd go two, three times a week whenever he had games. So that really prepared him. And then when he went, you know, to Canada too, yeah, it was like, no, you can't go. You're too young. You're gonna stay with somebody else. But yeah, yeah. he he was he was ready. He's he adapts to different situations. You know, whatever's gonna get him to his goal. You know, and achieve what he wants. To Sasana, right point, and left point to Scanlon. Back middle to Sasana, shoots to a screen. Scores! Dennis Sasana from the mid blue line. It deflects home off the stick of Nick Hamry, and the Bandits have a power play goal and a seven to one lead. Brooks is definitely, uh, definitely different than what I was used to um, throughout, you know, high school and, and middle school and whatnot. Albert is more of a more of a rural place, you know, a lot of flat, uh, rolling hills, and it's about an hour and a half south of uh, Calgary. So once you kind of get out of the city of Calgary, it's just pretty much straight for an hour or so, and um, you get to a little tiny place called Brooks, and the whole city kind of revolved around um, the Brooks Bandits was the team, and um, you know, it's a pretty special place as far as community and, and how they support the team there. And I feel like I went there and, and just kind of grew up a little, learned, uh, you know, as far as Hockey goes, I learned a ton from them, and, and just as far as off the ice, just becoming a man. And... He really matured, and he, uh, you know, he missed family, of course, because he is like a family person, you know, but he developed quite a bit. Oh, yeah, real. Yeah. You know, it's a, a big a step up. His first year, they, they made it right to the finals in the Canada, the league. That, that's how we got to get this scholarship is because of what he was playing and, and what he was doing on the ice. I kind of went in um, a little immature and, and it kind of, you know, Ryan Papuano was the head coach and uh, Scott Cunningham was the assistant when I was there. And 
From the early on, the, they set the tone as far as motivation and, and kind of just pushing uh, guys every day to, to become men and, and work hard. And, and they kind of engraved that in me, which I'm very thankful for. And, and it definitely helped me to, to prepare me for the college level. Probably count on two hands how many games my grandfather has missed. He's always been a big part of it, and, and I appreciate that. Lewandowski in, could be a 2 on one Sasano firing, and he scores! There's been some cool moments, like they were there for uh, when I scored my first goal at, at Cornell freshman year, so that was a pretty big deal. Uh, first time I, was, I saw them in a while, and most of my family was actually there, so um, that was a pretty cool moment for all of us, and all the cool road trips and uh, memories that we made, uh, it's pretty cool to look back on. Well, we've always traveled with him from when he was young. Wherever Dennis was on the ice, we were with him. We'll drive to Pennsylvania, you know, whatever's close, we'll drive to. If not, you know, we try to fly. Actually, that's how I got to take my first plane ride because of hockey. Yes, yes. So all the players would be going, Grandma, Grandma, are you okay up there? They knew it was my first plane ride. <laughs> They've put, you know, countless hours of driving or traveling wherever it was to just see me play even when I was a younger younger kid just because they loved it so much and uh, my grandma's one of her hobbies and, and passions for pretty much her whole life has been photography so um, she has pictures from everything so that's pretty cool to just be able to look back at some teams that I played on tournaments and, and things like that and whenever she can she always gets out and, and brings her camera with her. And we've been taking his pictures of him on the ice since, since she got on the ice. I have like over 300,000 pictures and uh, nobody can believe it. They go like, uh, I go, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually have two cameras. She would take almost over a thousand pictures a game. They still catch every game, obviously. Big 10 Network is, is pretty huge for them and they were pretty bummed they couldn't travel out uh, this year to watch any games. Hopefully that changes, but um, it's been pretty cool to have them along for the ride too. And I always tell him this now. I gotta look at my little note here. I always say to him before the games, I say, skate hard, play your game, stay focused, and be positive. Always be positive. It's nice to see Dennis succeed. I mean, especially, you know, when we see him from little, you know, getting up early, going to the practices, because this has been his goal all along. And he is achieving it, like I said to him. And I said, you dream the dream, work hard, and your, your dreams come true.